The U.S. government announcing its first major award from the CHIPS Act. It's actually the third, but it's the largest by dollar amount to date. It is giving Global Foundries $1.5 billion to expand and create new manufacturing capacity at three facilities, two that exist, one that's coming online in New York and Vermont. Joining us now to discuss in a CNBC exclusive is Global Foundries CEO Tom Caulfield. Tom, we were just speaking to you a week ago. I asked you about this a week ago. Um, so the fact that we're getting this news today, it's $1.5 billion from the Commerce Department in grants. It's another $1.6 billion in federal loans. And then there's funding coming from New York State for some of this investment as well. How meaningful is this to Global Foundries? How quickly can you bring all of this production capability online? Well, for, first, uh, thanks for ha having me. And for joining in our celebration, this is a big, a big deal. This is a big deal for Global Foundries. This is a big deal for our semiconductor industry. This is a big deal for our, our global teams in upstate New York and Vermont and, and the rest of the world. Uh, so your question is, you know, how does this capacity come online? Let's talk about the three elements of our CHIPS funding. Uh, the first one is to expand within our existing four walls in Fab 8 and Malta, New York, meaning to create new capacity there as well as more differentiated uh, technology platforms that we have around the world. So when our customers truly want to source in a resilient global footprint, we can give them solutions in our facilities around the world that are the same. The second investment that will come later in time is to actually double the scale of our Fab 8 facility in, in Malta, New York. And that will come as our industry rebounds and the demand from our customers is there. Look, it's about what you believe. And I certainly believe by the end of this decade, our industry will double and we will need that capacity. Okay. And then the third leg of this investment is taking our, uh, our, our facility, 200 millimeter facility in Vermont and modernizing it. That's a fab that's been online for almost 60 years. And we're gonna modernize that. We're gonna bring in new technologies, things in the advancement of wide band gap materials that allow for high power uh, uh, capabilities as well as high frequency communications. Yeah. I know in my interviews uh, with the Commerce Secretary and some of my own reporting uh, over the months that so much of the funding decisions that are being made through the CHIPS Act is happening through a national security lens, either directly or indirectly. I, looking at the press release, I mean, there are so many people quoted here from Lisa Sue at AMD to Jim Takelet at Lockheed, General Motors, um, Qualcomm. I could I could go down the list here in terms of the types of semiconductors that you're going to be manufacturing why they are crucial to national security and they, how they fit into the broader ecosystem at a time when we are continuously talking about supply chain uh, normalization and realization coming out of the pandemic. Yes, I think the, the breadth of that uh, list of supporters is, is really representative of the breadth of all the markets we serve, including aerospace and defense. You know, Global Foundries is designated as a trusted foundry for the U.S. government to make sure that we can produce the most sensitive semiconductors for their use. But I think what you're really seeing here is what we call the essential chips, uh, serving a broad range of markets from secure pay transactions in smart mobile devices uh, to radar in cars. And this is the, represents about 70% of the semiconductors required to fill our lives with all the electronic uh, components that create better engagement and, and, the, and the speed of our economy. Mm. Uh, you'll see later in time, I'm sure, um, some of this funding now going to the high-speed digital compute for data centers and some of the other players that participate in that space. Okay. But the pervasiveness of all the markets we address is really what this speaks to today and those endorsements you just uh, spoke about. So, Tom, I'm going to ask the question that some taxpayers certainly have. I, I know certainly because it's been in my inbox with the cost of capital where it is right now, what would you have done without this money, you know, that, that, you're, that, you're, uh, that you're able to do now? So what, what are you doing more quickly? What are you going to do now that you wouldn't have been able to do before? Look, th this, this money really should be treated as an investment, not as an incentive. Uh, what the whole purpose of the CHIPS bill was to make sure that the capital investments companies like GF, to, GF have to make to expand capacity, we can do it in a globally competitive way. Other regions of the world already recognize how important semiconductors are and give these types of co-investments. By and large, most of the money that will come into building these facilities will come from GF. What this, this type of funding does is it creates the ability for us to create globally competitive capacity 
and to do it right here in the U.S., consistent with what we do around the rest of the world in our global footprint. Okay. Sounds like you're saying you would have built it somewhere else. No. I would okay. say that we always have to make the best opportunity, best, best use of our capital. And we already have investments in the U.S., so we didn't get, you know, we, we did that on our own most of the time.